What's that sound like? Oh wow. Oh well, I did off the end dance, I think. Hey guys, this is uh, Tegazek in Roblox Studio. I've got something a little bit different today. This box just got delivered. It's basically what it says on the box, on the cardboard box, that it's a music player with a hologram. So let's have a look what happens when we turn it on. Okay. Oh, nice. Right, so apparently nothing is playing at the moment. So what's this then? Oh, nice. So what have we got here? Nice, so it gets uh, displayed, get some uh, tracks already displayed on that sort of thing. What's that sound like? Oh wow. Oh well, I did off the end dance, I think. <laughs> right, let's stop that. So yeah, that's basically what I've been working on. It's, it's a very basic um, music player if you like, with a hologram. So I've actually stopped the code. It's still very, very in its uh, infancy if you like. The I still have to work out how to stop the tracks and things. And as you saw, there's quite a few tracks on there. And the code behind it is actually working by sort of music, music files. So let's actually see if I can actually operate it right here. Let's turn it on. Hello. Apparently does not want to work that way. So I'll have to get back into the game again. Oh well, whatever. <laughs> yeah, so I've just uh, been basically do playing around with my uh, graphic equaliser thing and just spit out the uh, numbers from my web page thing that I made ages ago. I thought about making a different kind of thing. Something inside robots that you can actually play around with. And this is basically the result. So what we're seeing there is basically a load of parts wrapped around a core. So if I can actually find the part. So there we go. Let's select the parts. So it's basically just a load of parts. There we go. Wrapped around the core itself. Of course we've got a light and beam and things inside it. Each and every one of those. So let's actually get something playing. Um, I don't know. Let's try that one. Alright, so I don't get any copyright on this uh, video. Copyright strikes if you like. I'll turn it off. 
<laughs> so what I'm actually thinking about doing with this is possibly uploading this so you guys can actually play around with it and have a party if you like where this be a DJ maybe you have two of them we can actually mix them together or something and have that display going in the background so the way I got this working is I've made if I actually export that and load it up in uh, notepad plus plus we should be able to see what they look like it's basically just the encoded files from my uh, my encoder my graphical encoder if you like there, where are we? there we are so it's just a bunch of numbers if you like going from 0 to 255 and I'm just using those numbers to work out how far to move the uh, the uh, what do we call it? Ah, brain! Come on, work it. Move the parts. There we go. Yeah, it must be getting tired. Uh, yeah, I must be getting tired. If if you say. Come on, brain! Come on, mouth! Cooperate with you. So yeah, <laughs> let's load uh, my favourite one. Right, let's play that. That's another one. So basically it's just reading the, that table if you like. So you can actually work out how far to move it away from the sphere. So from the front to the back, the front is high. High frequency, I think it might be low or high, I can't remember which way, I did it round. So the code behind it is a bit uh, quite clever because it's taken from actually how robots do their, their spheres where if you ever look at, at a exported sphere from robots in a 3D modeling program you will notice that all the vortices inside that sphere is basically a box shape so that's basically how I draw my spheres in this yeah that's not the one I want uh, where are we yep where are we is that the one no, that's the button ah here we are so when the actual music player is not actually playing, it just plays this over and over. It's just a blank version of my blank song if you like. So as I was saying about that uh, that, uh, that square or cube that's actually made into a sphere through code. So I'll do the same thing here. So let's actually copy part of this code and I'll show you what I mean. So this is the function that does it. Uh, this is uh, on the fly if you like. So if you bear with me a few minutes if you like, I can get this one key. Right, notice that. Insert object, script, paste. So what am I using here? Position, right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the actual uh, the shell without the center point if you like. So. Place. Ah, can't do that. Just, remember, just uh, saw that I've got a value named that. Okay. 
do that one. Right, so I'm missing width. Let's say 16. Height of 16. Depth of 16. So it's basically just creating a box if you like. No, not that. Let's put it 50 stars above the base plate, I think. And part size. That's a integer, not a vector through. Right, I need a create part. I thought that thought that wasn't all of it. <laughs> well, let's go back to the other one and copy that over. While I'm waiting for that load. So that's all the errors that we've got at the moment. Come on, robots, we can load up. Come on, load up. We can do it quicker. Come on, robots. When you're done loading, <laughs> there we go, finally. All right, so I think it's inside the base. So what was the what was the uh, function called? Create part at. Of course, I won't uh, copy all the uh, all the parts in because this cut down version is not going to be uh, as good looking if you like. So let's just create the part and leave it as that. I think, and of course. Space. Like so. Right, so let's see what happens. I'm going to do that. Probably not going to work, but we can try it. Oh, there we go. So it's just basically just a load of parts, just resized to what I need to. And if I actually cut, stop the actual uh, making it fit. Uh, a sphere. So if I actually stop it here. Oh not so right, 
like so. So we should see just a box. Here we go. And of course I'm rotating it from the part. Let's actually change that from neon to something else so you can actually see it. It's a plastic and grey. There we go. So basically they are looking from their position to the centre of the box. And the next bit, the bit I've just commented out, is the way I made it into a sphere. That's how robots uh, make say a sphere. They just make a box with points, or vortices if you like. And then they just uh, squash down the eight corners if you like. So, let's see if I can remember how I did, did that. So, Let's have a look at my comment now. If you ever do any coding in any kind of program or any kind of environment, should I say, it's best to leave comments for yourself or your future self so you know exactly what, what's going on what. So that's the reason why I comment quite a bit on my code now. So basically what I do is set each point, each box, from the centre to the, the actual box itself, set the distance between that and that to a magnitude of 1, or the distance between the two equals to 1, which then, which is the magic that makes it into a sphere, and then I just explode that sphere out to what you see in the end result, which is loads like so so they were had a, a distance between the center and the point itself and where they are a distance of uh, one and then I'll just times it by the size of the sphere if you like or radius of the sphere actually quite a neat way of doing it but the only problem is you get dense parts like in the corner there but it's good enough for what uh, what I wanted. So let's actually change the density of that sphere. So let's have a look. Uh, how did I do that? I was reading. Ah, uh, oh, here we go. Times three times 10. That's the distance that I'll set to default and I'll change it later on in the code because I'll be turning all the parts. There you go. So that's basically how I draw, uh, did the sphere if you like and I think I missed a few little bits like the width and the height of each other part. Yeah because I think I'll set it to a plane or something like a flat plane. And there we go, we can see the, uh, the sort of the stretchy parts of it. It's just a glorified box that's converted into a sphere. And then when the play when I'm playing the music, it goes through that, uh, that song database and it converts these numbers from zero to the max distance. I think I set it to, I don't know, I think it's 15 or something. Let's have a look. Let's go in. So that's the create part. Let's create the sphere itself. And that's turning it on. That's working out what song index we're on for the shuffle, which is actually not working properly yet. But I'm hoping to get a shuffle play. Right, you can actually have. Uh, play all the songs in your list and then sort of shuffling like a normal mp3 player if you like or on your phone if you like then if there's nothing playing it plays that blank script uh, song 
which is basically just a blank version of that. Wow. Slow refresh, refresh light rate then. <laughs> oh well. So then I'm working out to display a message on my display where I've actually done a video on the display itself this thing here in another video that I should be should be just before this one depends on how uh, quickly uh, YouTube sort of renders the videos so I'm working out as I was saying I'm working out each of the points in that side of that table and working out a value between 0 and 255 if it comes across a value of 0 then it's at its uh, minimum distance and then if it's a value at 255 or anywhere between it will move the point outside out of that uh, default range so if I can actually find the bits ah yes I will add a little spin to the actual parts itself give it look make it look cool and I think I rotated it 90 degrees as well because the way I drew, drew it or make it is uh, the front part is actually up upright so I'll just rotate the whole thing round so it's displaying from the side which is a lot better to view it than uh, have it the other way around yeah so then I'm using a custom function to remap a number value between a set value and the max value if you like of 255 which is what we have on our song and this radius is basically how far these this sphere should stretch to depending on how loud the frequency is because that's basically how it's working it's working on how loud the frequency uh, in the music is so anyway that's enough uh, chatting about it and I'm getting tired just uh, my jaws are aching <laughs> just talking so yeah let's close that down close and of course close that one down let's get back into game and uh, dance to it for our outro I think <laughs> so yeah if I can get this working properly and get it, maybe getting it working online you may uh, have the chance of visiting the place this place I may add a few more things here and there this is just a something I was doing while relaxing after a hard day sort of thing and just imported my display and resized it down and just hooked it up to the uh, my player right let's play it uh, that one yeah let's get my podium See you later guys.